This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Understand the most important ideas from a huge range of books in just 15 minutes. These days, if you're wanting to watch a movie, you're probably far more likely to stream something rather than pop in an old DVD or a VHS. And if you're anything like us, that probably means you have a huge stack of films that you've not touched in forever. To avoid this huge amount of plastic from going to landfill, we've recently started collecting both the DVD cases and the discs themselves. We have very quickly amassed quite a collection, which we've been separating into lots of different colours and breaking down using our plastic shredding machine, also known as Shreddy Kruger. As always, we're also separating everything into their own plastic types to ensure nothing gets mixed up. DVD cases are made from polypropylene, and this is a fairly easy material to recycle as long as you've got the right setup. The DVD discs, however, are made from a different material, so we've been setting these aside for something else. We are really keen to make something from them, so if you have any ideas of what we could do, let us know in the comments below. We've recently been sent a prototype machine from the wonderful folks over at CR Clark, which is going to help us recycle a whole whack of plastic all at once. So we are very proud to introduce our brand new recycled plastic sheet press. Think of this as essentially a giant panini press that you can dial the temperature into anything you like, which is perfect because polypropylene needs a slightly higher temperature than HDPE. We have a 60 by 60 centimetre mould, which is four times the size of our sheets that we made before in our DIY press. And to fill a mould of this size, we're going to need six or seven kilos of our shredded plastic, which translates to about 120 DVD cases. We mixed up some purple, white and clear flakes and then loaded that into the press. We do plan to set up proper fume extraction for this machine, but for now we're just using our portable fume extractor along the front edge. If you want to learn more about fumes and general safety when working with recycled plastics, then check out our previous video. We even hired in a proper legit scientist guy and everything. Whilst that plastic is melting and squishing, we thought we'd prep our other material for the top of this coffee table. We're using 18mm birch face ply and it's been well over four years since we've last bought this material and it's gone up from £80 to now £180. That's why we stick to recycled plastic. Wood is hella expensive. Now you guys have already seen the thumbnail, so you know what this is going to look like, but this was our original sketch, which was to design something which looked a little bit like a stained glass window, but using plastic instead of glass. We came up with this geometric design and we thought we'd just fill all of the little spaces and voids with different brightly coloured pieces of recycled plastic. We're using our CNC to cut out the design of the tabletop, so we made it the biggest we possibly could fit on the bed of the machine, which is 800 by 500 mil. So we clamped this stupidly pricey piece of plywood into our Stepcraft D840 CNC, and then loaded up our file in, in ah, ah, that's really distracting. It's twirling a, what is it, a mop, yeah. a Swiffer mop around when I'm trying to do a voiceover. Get off. <laughs> So we clamped this stupidly pricey piece of plywood into our Stepcraft D840 CNC, installed a 6mm end mill, and then loaded up our file in Vectric Aspire to create our toolpaths. Woo! <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we did get a little bit of tear out on some of those cut edges, which was a little bit annoying seeing as we had to take out a pretty much a bank loan to get this bit of wood. There is probably a better cutter that we can use for plywood, so if there are any of you CNC pros out there, please let us know because it would be a massive help. Other than that tear out, the rest went almost perfectly. I say almost because we did make one other mistake in the file, which meant the CNC drove itself right through the finished tabletop. Luckily, we caught it really quickly and we'll be able to fill that no problem later on. It is. We sanded the worst of the tear out using our Triton Geo sander, and then using our multi-tool, we cut those waste pieces free. We designed each of these shapes to have a step exactly 12 millimeters down from the surface of the wood. This means that when we've cut out our 12 mil thick plastic pieces, they should sit perfectly flush with the top of the table. We then used a flush trim bit in our router to remove all of those tabs, and then also went back and filled that little mistake we made earlier on with a small scrap. We also went back and sanded some of that tear out we had earlier on with some regular wood filler. Then after an hour or so, we sanded that back as well and gave everything a couple of coats of black paint. We did tape up the edges before painting because we quite like the look of that exposed plywood edge contrast against the black. Then we chamfered the top and the bottom to take off that sharp edge before giving everything a few coats of spray varnish. So you might be thinking, all this talk of DVDs, I don't really watch movies, I'm more of a book person myself. And then those book people might be thinking, I do bloody love a book, but I don't have time to sit down and read all day. Well, if that's the case, then the sponsor of today's video is going to be right up your stream. Blinkist helps you to understand the key concepts from a book into a series of short blinks. They cover a massive range of topics from over 5,500 non-fiction books and podcasts. And it's genuinely done in a really engaging way. They don't just give you a bullet-pointed list of the main takeouts, but instead a 15-minute cut-down version of the whole book. You can either read or listen to an audio version of your chosen book, which works perfectly for us as we can listen to one together on our commute into the workshop each morning. The latest one that we listened to was Waste Not by Erin Rhodes, which essentially acts as a practical guide to reducing your waste output. For example, did you know that clothing is one of the biggest sources of waste and Australia alone throws away 6,000 kilos of it every 10 minutes? So the book suggests some solutions such as buying second-hand items or focusing on products which are made from natural fibres rather than synthetic ones. And it gives us a load of other ideas on how we can reduce our consumption levels, some of which we've already implemented in the workshop, as this year we set out to really reduce the amount of waste that we produce. They've also just launched Blinkist Connect, which allows every premium account account user to share their account with somebody else. Lovely stuff. So if you fancy giving Blinkist a try, you can start your seven day free trial by heading over to blinkist.com forward slash brothers make. And if you like it as much as we do, they're offering 25% off to all brothers make viewers so that you can start enjoying two memberships for the price of one. Thank you so much to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Now let's go see how our plastic sheet is looking. Right, so full, complete honesty here, this is actually only the second sheet we've ever made on this machine, so we were so excited to demold it that we completely forgot to film anything. And by the time we'd even realised that we hadn't even turned the camera on, we'd already made it into a brand new tabletop for one of our workbenches. We do get carried away sometimes. If it helps, the workbench is looking insanely cool. Here's a little sneak peek. But we think we might do a quick video on the other workbench, so that's all you're getting for now, I'm afraid. So this demolding that you're watching now is actually our third ever sheet, which we tried a similar colour blend to the one before, with some blues instead of the purples. Fun fact, the light blue here comes from Blu-ray cases, and the darker blue comes from Disney DVDs. The result is this stunning flat sheet with a super smooth finish. And since we have to leave these sheets to cool in the machine overnight, we can only make one of these per day. So we batched out a load of slightly thinner 12mm sheets in a load of different colours, and then cut them down to size, ready for the next step. To cut these out, we're going to switch things up, and we're going to use our Wazer Waterjet Cutter. This works in a very similar way to the CNC, but instead uses a super accurate and high pressure water jet to blast through the material. Pretty neat, eh? Hey? 
The first time we ever saw the Wazer in action was about four years ago in one of Jimmy DeResta's videos where he actually made a stained glass window. That video has massively inspired this one and we think it's really cool that we get to work with such awesome machines. So a big thank you to Wazer and to Jimmy for all the inspiration. There's a couple of benefits of using this over the CNC for this application. The main one being that the kerf cut is only 1.2 mil wide, meaning there's a lot less waste produced. Now, as you know, we try and collect every single scrap of plastic waste that we produce. We're currently experimenting with ways that we can collect the small amount of waste that the water jet produces. The plastics that we work with all float in water, whereas the abrasive will sink to the bottom. So separation should be feasible. If you've got any neat ideas on how we can make that work, just let us know. We picked a random assortment of shapes to cut out of these five different sheets and then let the Wazer do its thing. And as you can see, that really high pressure jet of water makes a super clean and accurate cut in the plastic. Once they're all cut, we give the bottom edge a tiny little round over just to make them fit a little bit easier into the frame. We were very pleased to find that these pieces fit absolutely perfectly with no need for glue or screws. We were a little bit nervous because we used two different machines to cut the same shapes, but it's great to know that these are dialed in perfectly. We took our time fitting all of the pieces, making sure not to damage that stupidly expensive plywood or our lovely little plastic recycled shapes. So leave it with us, we'll get all of that finished off, we'll chuck some legs on it and then we'll show you the final result. Well, boom, there you go. That is our take on a stained plastic table. We are absolutely in love with how bright and striking this looks, so much so that we've installed it as a centerpiece in our new office. Look, look, it's right there. Not lying. Now that we know it works so well, we're super keen to try out some more sort of complex and interesting designs in the future. Just a few thank yous before we leave you to continue perusing the wonders of YouTube. Firstly, we want to say thank you to you lot for watching. It's massively appreciated. And if you did want to subscribe, we would love you forever. Secondly, a big thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this video, as well as give us something more interesting than the radio to listen to on the way to the workshop in the morning. If you're interested, be sure to check the link in the description to subscribe. And last, but by, by no means least. Here we go. It's those, oh, they're just, they're just so perfect, Matt. It's the way they look. The way they smell, smell. the way they feel. <laughs> they're, they're just the whole package. Never met them. <laughs> We've met some of them, but they're the wonderful lot over on Patreon. Thank you, all of you. You're incredible and you always help us, you know. You help us with everything. If you are interested in joining the Brotherhood, there's a link in our description below. As always, no pressure at all. Love you all. See, See you later. later.
how gorgeous it is. It's so pretty. Like me.